Let's start with writing our first unit test. I'm gonna open up activities.ts. Some of the things in this file are related to Vue.js, so I'm going to skip those functions and focus on native JavaScript functions. And one of such functions in this file is called update activity. Let's write the test for this function and according to some conventions, to store all test related code, we can create folder with the name test in the root of our application. And in here we're gonna place all test files that we are going to call the same as source files that we are testing. And just because the function we're about to test is located inside the file with the name activities, we're going to call this test the same. And also it is important to mention suffix test or spec. This way, when we're gonna run vtest, it is going to search for tests in files with these suffixes. And that is why I'm calling this file activities.test.ts. And the first thing we're going to do in every test file is actually import function called it from the vtest package, like so. This will be the main function that we're going to use to write testing scenarios. As the first parameter, this function accepts a string with the description of this testing scenario. So we have to come up with such description for this scenario that best describes what we're trying to test here. It's better to keep this description concise, not too long, but at the same time as readable as possible. And since in this case we're going to test the function which updates activity, I'm going to literally say it updates activity. And to be exact, it is not really a function but an object, which means we can call additional methods on it. And one of such methods is called to do, that we can use to firstly describe all testing scenarios before actually getting to write test implementations. So when using this to do syntax, if we're gonna run tests, Vit is not going to complain about absence of implementations for those tests. So I'm going to specify upfront all the scenarios that we're going to test. There will be only two scenarios. And in this case, those scenarios will correspond to individual functions. The second function we're going to test is called calculate activity completion percentage. So let's get back to the test file. And I'm going to add description to the second testing scenario. It calculates activity completion percentage. So now after we're going to run npm test in the terminal, we're actually going to see those testing scenarios that we have written by using to do method. So now we're going to write implementation for the first testing scenario. Let's remove this call to to do method and pass a function as a second argument like this. And before writing test implementation, let's talk a little bit about anatomy of the test. Usually each test can be split into three parts. A range phase, act phase, and a third phase. And sometimes those phases are also called as given, when, and then. In the arrange phase, we're about to prepare all necessary things needed to execute testing scenario. In the act phase, we're going to call the function we are about to test. And finally, in the assert phase, we're going to write our expectations. That should be true in order for this test to be considered as passed. So now let's switch back to the file with implementation of the function we're about to test, update activity, and take a look at its implementation. As we can see, this function accepts two parameters. First one is an activity object. It has type of activity. So the activity object is basically an object with three fields, ID, name, and seconds to complete. And as a second argument, this function accepts another object, which is supposed to have some of those fields that activity object has, but with updated values that we're about to assign to the fields of an activity object. And this is exactly what this assign method call is doing. It basically takes fields of the second parameter and assigns them to the fields of the first parameter activity. 
and also it modifies an activity object referenced by the first parameter activity. So the first thing we're going to do is to actually call this function update activity in the second phase of our test. Let's call update activity. Right away we can see that this function is highlighted. There is TypeScript complaining about that this function accepts two arguments that we haven't yet passed. So we're gonna have to pass activity object that we're about to update, as well as object with updated fields to be assigned to the activity object. Just to remind you that an object of an activity type should have three fields with names ID, name, and seconds to complete. And that means that we have to prepare our data in the first phase of the test. So I'm going to create a constant activity that is going to hold a reference to the activity object. And here I'm going to describe an object of that shape with three properties. ID, name, and seconds to complete. And also to make it clear for TypeScript that this object is actually of an activity type, we can explicitly specify the type of this constant. It will be activity. We also have to import this type up above. And then I'm going to create another activity object, which is basically going to store new values for the activity fields. It will have the same shape as an activity object. The only difference will be in values of every field. So what is actually supposed to happen after we're gonna call update activity is this first activity object should have all its fields updated with values located in the fields of the second activity object. Because inside update activity function we're calling this method assign to assign fields of the second object into the first object. And finally we're going to write our expectations what we're expecting to happen after we have called update activity function. So to write an expectation, we use function called expect. This function is provided by vtest. Let's import this from the vtest package. And then as the first argument to this function, we're passing the value we're about to check. In this case, we're checking activity object if it was updated. And then this call to function expect is going to return an object with a bunch of methods that we can use to do different checks. For example, in this case, the method we're going to use is called toEqual because we're about to check that the activity object is actually equal to some another value. And this another value will be an updated activity object because this object we have used to update fields of the first activity object. And this way we're checking that our update activity function has done its job. And indeed, in the terminal we're seeing that the first test has passed. By the way, when we ran npm test, vtest has started in the watch mode. That means anytime we're going to change any of our source files, it is going to rerun tests. So it basically works similar to hot module replacement in the browser. Whenever we're making changes to source files, and see changes in the browser without refreshing the page. And also while npm test command is running, we can use different keys to control test runner. For example, to rerun the test, we can press R and to see all available comments, we can press H. Here we have a short description of every command and the key responsible for running that command. For example, to run all tests, we can use key A. Next, even though our test has passed, it's always a good idea to check if the test is going to fail when we're gonna comment out this function call to make sure that we're testing the right thing. And there we go, now the test is failing because activity object hasn't been updated. And we have some mismatches in the values of fields. Now let's also try to comment out an implementation of the update activity function and make sure that our test still fails. And it does. So at this point we can be sure that we are testing the right thing. But also please note that this function, besides updating the activity object, also has a return value. But even if we're not going to return anything from this function and take a look at our test, we can see that it still passes. 
So as of now we're not testing everything related to this function. Let's try to improve this test. That is going to ensure that we also return proper value from the update activity function call. I'm going to rename this constant updated activity to be called updated fields. And then let's accept returned value of the update activity function and store it inside of the constant update activity. So now we have a way to check what is actually stored inside this constant. And we also have to rename this variable on updated fields just because we have previously renamed this constant. So now let's add another expectation and see if the value stored inside of update activity constant matches updated activity. So we'll use the same method to equal and compare updated activity with updated fields. And as we can see, those two expectations are passed. But now if we're going to forget to return value from the update activity function, the test is going to tell us about it. As we can see, it fails now, because that function did not return anything. Let's also check that test is going to tell us that we have done something wrong. If, for example, we're going to return an activity object without updating it, like so. And indeed, test is failing now. So now we can be sure that the update activity function works as expected, because we have a test. And if we're going to break this function, test is going to notify us about it. And as a common practice, it is good to split three phases of a test by using new lines. The first phase is a preparation where we are preparing all necessary data to run our test. Then we put a new line, followed by the second part of the test, we are work calling that function that we are testing. And then comes another empty line, which separates second part of the test and the third one. And here we have all our assertions or expectations that should all be true in order for this test to pass. And this way we have written our first test. Let's continue in the next lesson. Link to the source code of this lesson will be in the video description.